afternoon, everybody. Todd Metalhead, Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. If I sound a little bit off kilter, I am. I've been feeling sick over the last couple of days. Uh, it's really bad today, but we're pushing through. I got work to do here, so if you appreciate the content, definitely make sure you're hitting that like button and hitting that subscribe button. I'm not going to lie, I'm not feeling great. I'll put it that way. But enough complaining. But in any case... We already know what's going on here with Helene. You can actually see what Helene is doing on satellite right now in the top right corner. And it's getting its act together pretty quickly here. You can actually start to see a bit of an eye beginning to form here. So I wouldn't be surprised by the next advisory, which will be around the time this video goes up, that we may see an increase in the current wind speed right now. It is currently sitting at 45 miles an hour with west-northwest movement at 12 miles an hour. And a central low pressure of 999 millibars. This is, of course, expected to become a major hurricane and make landfall as a major hurricane Thursday evening. Impacts are going to be far and wide, not only from the areas that are showing the tropical storm and hurricane advisories, but even into the deep south at this point and also the Ohio Valley, maybe even the Midwest as well. Impacts are going to, of course, range from rainfall, storm surge, severe weather such as tornadoes of course and flooding but interesting things to make note of here in regards to the forecasted strength right now it's forecasted to be a low end category three a little bit better picture than what we were painting yesterday where we were seeing some of these model these uh, spaghetti models pushing it over towards category four and five we aren't seeing that right now the thing is though and this is why I'm kind of making this video in particular. Do not let your guard down just because it's saying it's a cat only going to make it to a low end category three. For one, we don't even know if that's entirely going to be true or not. It still could strengthen beyond that point because Gulf waters are very warm and it's always a wild card whenever it gets into the Gulf at this point. We thought that uh, Barrel was, wasn't even going to make it to a hurricane after it went over the Yucatan and lo and behold it did. It made a really good push towards category two in fact. Debbie became a category two when it made landfall earlier this year so there's no reason to believe that Helene may not be able to may or may not be able to exceed expectation here we're honestly hoping for the inverse at this point but fact of the matter is right now still major hurricane expected to make landfall later this week here so you need to be watchful now just because the spaghetti models aren't showing it there's a few other models that are showing this to still be slightly stronger than what's being forecast right now too so we're gonna have to keep an extra close eye on this either way. So looking at some of the impacts first before we get into that, one of the biggest concerns that I have, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people do as well, is gonna be the storm surge. From the big bend over here, and I cannot pronounce either one of these names right now, especially with me sounding stuffy, I'm just not gonna try this time. I'm sorry to anyone that may be disappointed by that. But this area in the purple here, 10 to 15 foot storm surge possible here that's basically i'll put it in perspective for you i'm actually a pretty tall guy i'm over six feet i'm actually over six five that's essentially two of me right here you're talking about so if you are in this area and you have an evacuation order don't even argue just go honestly that's what i'm gonna say there over toward this area in the red that's taller than the average person by far five to ten feet so if if this is tall if any of these storm surges are taller than six feet and the inundation comes into play as well i wouldn't i just wouldn't hang around there so if you have it to evacuate definitely do so otherwise make preparations the best that you can from this point here so we'll go ahead and actually take a look at said storm surge inundation here and any areas in the red are very much troubling Anything that's in the orange is above six feet, as we mentioned before, and that's the magic number at this point. And you can see across a large part of the region here, even if, even over towards Tampa Bay where the storm surge forecast wasn't as severe, the inundation is going to be high. So definitely need to be extremely aware towards this region over the course of the next couple of days. If you have the opportunity to leave and prepare, definitely do that right now. Do not wait. Another big impact, of course, that we're going to be talking about is the rainfall potential and the flooding potential to go along with it. So a lot of areas I'm seeing right now are expecting about six to eight, maybe even 
as much as 12 inches of rain, especially over towards the mountains, the Appalachian Mountains, excuse me, no stuffy. But this region over here is going to be the beneficiary, and that's for lack of a better term, the beneficiary of a lot of rainfall. It may really be to our detriment, to be honest. But in any case, though, rainfall is going to be uh, pretty excessive over towards the region, hence why there's actually a moderate risk for flash flooding over this region here. As far as other impacts, the storm, of course, as we talked about earlier, once it makes landfall, it's going to push out towards the northeast a little bit and then actually curve back over towards the Midwest a bit. So this is why we have places like Springfield, Missouri in the mix here, along with Little Rock and Memphis, as well as Nashville. So the rainfall is going to be a pretty significant problem over here. And it's going to be lingering over the course of the next few days, even after landfall. So definitely need to be watchful of that. Now, again, we talked about this yesterday. We're going to make sure we drive this point home as best as we can. Once you start to experience tropical storm force winds, your time for preparation is up. If you're evacuating at this point, good job. After that, it's not going to get much better. I hate to paint the doom and gloom picture there, but that is, that's really just what is. So if, if you're over here towards Tampa Bay, anytime after, I would say 2 a.m. on Thursday, your time's up to prepare. You should already be on the way out of there if you haven't already gotten out of there and then by the time we get towards 8 a.m the area where we're expecting our landfall time's up there and then we could even have tropical storm force winds lingering all the way up into my neck of the woods which is atlanta georgia by 8 p.m on thursday so some of the worst conditions could start overnight on thursday night into early friday morning so be ready for changing conditions even well inland at this point with major hurricanes they will have a lot of energy to spare even as they go inland and weak weaken a bit so let's go ahead and take a look at some model data here this is the hwrf very good model when it comes to tracking hurricanes and even severe weather sometimes to put it in perspective for you just how strong this system could be because i know not everyone's familiar with the pressure uh on here we have this chart right here in the top left corner to go along with our satellite imagery so basically you can match the numbers that you're seeing right here in the red along with the scaling that we're seeing there and what we're going to be looking at is as this gets closer to landfall look at how that pressure really starts to drop at this point we're at a 944 millibar low as we're heading into thursday afternoon which is a very powerful hurricane. This is very much exceeding the major hurricane point. We're starting to get into that category four range. At its lowest point here, the pressure actually may drop. A, I thought it might've dropped a little lower. That might've been a glitch. But in any case though, 942 millibar low just before landfall Thursday afternoon into Thursday evening. So major issues could be ahead here big time winds are going to be expected here i would not be surprised to see a notable tornado threat with this as well a lot of energy with this storm as well so could be some big time problems here and this maintains its strength pretty well based off the hwrf here we have a 965 millibar low by the time we get into overnight friday night or overnight friday morning i should say and this of course lingers and it makes that turn that we were expecting and will try to rain itself out over the western parts of the mississippi here so definitely need to be on watch for that so now while we've talked about helene for now and we'll be making an update stream tomorrow we do have another area we need to watch here this area has an 80 percent chance of developing within the next seven days and a 40 percent chance of developing within the next two days so what's going on with that there and good news with this system and anything that goes after that right now for the most part we're expecting everything to go out to sea there are a couple models that try to bring it close to the 60 degree west line which would be right about here 
but just thankfully we don't have anything major going on at that point here we do have to watch other systems after after helene here but so far it doesn't look like we have any major concerns for an immediate impact right after but we'll be keeping an extra close eye on the region here quick look at the environment before we go wind shear is going to of course be a key factor and it's really this troughing right here that's going to maybe help inhibit this storm a bit and i think that's why not a lot of the models are on board with the, the extreme case of rapid intensification so hopefully that ends up holding true and we don't get anything greater than what, what's already forecast if anything we would like to see something a little bit weaker but we'll have to see how things develop from there so we go back towards the main development region which is going to be our point of interest afterwards here we do have some wind shear that comes into play but it's going to remain relatively light and it's going to make for an environment where more storms can develop after that point here over towards the gulf actually we start to see more in the way of wind shear coming into play here maybe a more active storm pattern as we start out the month of october but we'll have to wait and see how this plays out but from the looks of it even if the sea surface temperatures are warm this may play to our advantage here in keeping things a little bit calmer after this point because if things go the way we're expecting to or if things intensify beyond what we're expecting now we're gonna want we're gonna want to break after this in any case though last thing we'll look at here of course is the relative humidities at the mid levels very much important in regards to the development of tropical systems here We've been battling Saharan dust over the main de development region for most of the year here. But we do end up getting a little bit of a break in between after a while here. So we may see more in the way of tropical systems. And that is an interesting run there. That, while it is really far out, almost 16 days out, if that comes into play, that might be a problem. So we'll have to watch, of course, the main development region from this point. But if it makes it this far and goes past the 60 degree west line, we may need to be watching Florida once again, maybe the east coast. The thing is, with storms like these, whenever they get this far off to the west here, usually you anticipate them to make a turn out to sea. But there were a few models in that ensemble run that we looked at that did bring it pretty close. Like I said, I'm not sure if I'm on board with this just yet. But still, the fact that we're seeing that definitely causes me to raise a brow here. So best thing to, that you can do is make sure you're staying updated here by hitting that like button, hitting that subscribe button, and also hitting that share button and the notification bell. Because we do tropical outlooks at least once a week during hurricane season. That being said, we'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care and have an awesome rest of your, your day and evening. I'm going to try to fight this off so I can get a little bit better. But until then, I'll see you then.